their own brands in Australia. Yeah, so, yeah. Can we talk about the importance of these kind of initiatives? Yeah. yeah um, well, Sydney is yeah. Sydney and Australia are a very small fashion market. Even though it's a very big country, the population density is very. Um, there's just not a lot of people in Australia, so um, the fashion community is fairly small, and you know the, there's not a great deal of retailers or buyers that are um, based in Australia. So yeah, it is very important for emerging designers to have initiatives such as the Mark Prize to really help um, you know help build their brands and help kind of expose them to a global audience. Um, yeah, I think it's it's challenging being based in Australia um, and only relying on the Australian market. I think it's, um, it's important for all young and emerging designers to really be able to also communicate their brand globally in order to survive and in order to build a successful brand. Um, so I think, yeah, it's really important from the start to be thinking internationally rather than just focusing on the Australian market. Did you always thought uh, about going global? I mean, did you ever felt that you were, I don't know, somehow doomed to be local only in Australia? Um, no, I never, <laughs> I never really wanted to, um, I suppose, to be kind of based there or to see myself as just an Australian brand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I always kind of from the start really wanted to compare myself to international brands and I think doing so really challenges you and really kind of, um, you know, if you want your brand to be on the world stage, you need, really do need to compare the product to um, the best designers in the world. And I think that process is what really um, pushes you and motivates you and kind of um, drives you to kind of create the best collection you can create. Um, yeah, I was in Australia, living in Australia for the first, um, yeah, really the first like six and a half years of having my brand. And, and that was a really important part of um, building a strong foundation for the business and um, really learning a lot in those years as well. Um, and since showing in New York, I've been showing in New York like three years now um, and I've been based there nearly two years. So um, yeah, I think that's been a really important step in terms of um, you know continuing to move the brand forward and um, also for me just continuing to really um, push myself and expose myself to new um, suppliers, new um, ways of working and really continuing to kind of grow and challenge yourself. Um, so when uh, you were a student you had your dreams, you want your own label etc. But when you started your own brand, I mean right now what would you want to know that you didn't know when you were a student? <laughs> what um, shocked you or, you know? I think for me the challenge was really balancing the creativity and the design process with building the business. Um, yeah, when I started my brand it was just me and I was kind of doing everything um, myself. I think the, the rise of online retail, um, you know, social media as a platform for communication, um, yeah, we might see something, we see so much now, like we see so much detail behind collections and as they happen, um, there's a sense of immediacy um, in terms of like product these days and I think the consumer now, you know, isn't really, doesn't really have the patience to wait six months for something. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we see so many things between the time that something is on the runway to when it's in store. And I think kind of bridging that gap is what the challenge really is. Yeah. Did you see the new application Kim Kardashian? Um, no. It, it's, it's, um, I saw it yesterday. You can screenshot the look of any look uh, on your Instagram, but you have to have the application. And then you uh, upload that um, screenshot to the application, and that application shows you all alternatives of that look, right. whatever it is, like <laughs> your outfit or yeah, outfit. crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The way we consume product is just so different now. It's yeah. not, it's not like going into a store, or going into a retail store, and finding something that you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really a process of really, yeah, encountering brand and product through so many different applications. Um, 
yeah, we see so much imagery every day um, that it's really is processing that and you know turning that into um, how you purchase product. Mm -hmm. What is your vision uh, of fashion in the future? What are your hopes and fears? What do you think will happen? Um, I think we're going to continue to see that digital integration of how we shop and how we kind of how we integrate product into our life. Um, and yeah, I think it's also. Um, exciting because there's so much potential for it to really revolutionize the design process as well. Um, as you said, there's apps like that where, yeah, it might be, at the moment it might be finding your product, but in future it might be creating your product. Um, yeah. So I think that there's just huge potential in terms of, yeah, um, from design all the way through to how we purchase product. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about a new way of couture like uh, renaming or reshaping the couture thing, you know, like every uh, customer can own a couture because uh, as you said, like as you said, if you want a suit, you can design every single detail of it. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking about maybe it can develop or evolve into that, you know, a new way of couture. Yeah, I think, yeah. Way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the interesting and exciting part of, yeah, the evolution of fashion as well is like, I suppose that balance between things that are digital and things that are kind of like man-made or, um, you know, uh, done by machines mm -hmm. and that which is done through handcraft and, yeah, you know, and makers. through, yeah, and yeah. through product and through kind of, I suppose, um, things that are a little bit more traditional in craft. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see how that will kind of marry as well. Yeah. Uh, how much do you involve technology in your um, fashion business, let's say? Ellery made a show, uh, her last show was uh, digital, you know, it could, it could have been seen all over the world, etc. Um, people are, brands are digitalizing in their fashion shows. Uh, are you planning on something like that or, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, there, I think there's still something really important about a physical fashion show, and I think that there is still, um, you know, it's the same thing as really kind of looking at a, a, a photo of an artwork and going into a gallery and experiencing We're something. A and yeah, the pages. yeah, I think it's still really important to have that connection with something, and you know, there's there's so much there's so much fashion these days. There's so much. Um, that happens that I think kind of being there and experiencing something in that environment is still really important um, Yeah, I definitely think the digital presence of a fashion show is always going to be greater than um, What is physically experienced, but yeah, I still think the industry is um, About relationships and the people that do support you and the people who really do kind of um, help um, build your brand with you and I think that um, relationship is really built through those experiences and through um, special moments like fashion shows. Okay, sorry, I think I'm going to go back. Uh, yeah, Majella, there was a designer that I've always kind of admired and felt that was really intelligent and clever mm -hmm. um, in so many ways. Yeah. What drives you when you're designing? What are you influenced? What, what are your influences? Um, I think they change all the time, but for me, um, yeah, there is always like a sculptural element to what I'm interested in doing or, a, or an interesting kind of fabric technique. Um, yeah, I think I, I suppose what I'm motivated by is trying to do something that feels signature to myself and feels like, um, I suppose, not anyone else's idea. I think that's the really hard thing for a designer to do, yeah. <laughs> is to kind of find something that you feel no one has really, or doesn't look like someone else's work, um, but still feels very authentic to you. Um, so yeah, I think whenever I'm looking at a collection of my own, it's how can I kind of communicate my brand and be myself in a new way um, that really connects with the customer. That, that is a decision, right? You know, um, following following another brand's um, style, which we see a lot in these couple of years, like the Gucci and Vesman influence, you know? Yeah. And, you know, keeping your own 
style and you know yeah. just stick onto it. Yeah, it's and it's hard and in it's hard, in a sense. Yeah. It's balancing those two things because you know the market does shift in different you have directions. To sell. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's yeah. there's always like a trend and what's popular and mm -hmm. you know what feels relevant at a certain time. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's important for a designer to always kind of like keep within their DNA. Um, you can kind of touch on trends and yeah, it might be this season a trench coat's really popular. And yeah, without needing to emulate someone else's design, you can still work into what feels relevant and do it in your own way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the, I'm going to name two brands, but you know, they're top right now, the Gucci and um, Balenciaga. I think yesterday there was an article that said Balenciaga took over the Gucci's whole, you know, hotness over. There's like a war right now between the two of them and this, you know, whole crazy thing going on. What do you think about it? Um, I suppose it's, it's all happened very quickly and anything that happens with such immediacy, you kind of um, question the longevity of, uh -huh. of a trend. Like it's I going mean, to shift immediately to another Yeah, trend. well I think with Gucci it was just so, um, it was, um, yeah, it was just so hyped and so, um, you know, like everywhere.